I have something very important to say to you. Please gather around and lend me an attentive ear. You may have noticed in the Muslim world, people have been going crazy. People have died, houses have been burnt, and everybody is in a state of chaos. Why is this the case? Because one of the best men to have walked this planet has been insulted and degraded. We had this vile expression of speech, this degradation, this manifestation of immorality. It was a disgrace to any civilization to present a video about a man that billions of people love. Any civilization, whether it's the West or the East, disagrees with this vile degradation. It's a manifestation of dishonesty, of vileness and immorality. And we are here, we are here to tell you who this man was. Because people degrade this man because they don't know who he is. And this man is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon whom be peace. So who was Muhammad? Muhammad was a man that came 1400 years ago into an environment in 7th century Arabia where men were burying their daughters alive and he stopped this evil practice. When women were being abused, prostitution was ripe. It was everywhere. There was injustice. There was economic injustice. And this was the reality of 7th century Arabia. And Muhammad, upon whom be peace, came and brought peace and tolerance and justice not only to the 7th century, but to the whole world. But you may be saying to me, so what? Many people may have done this. But the argument is that this man, Muhammad, upon whom be peace, he had a claim. Not only did he do all these amazing things, but he said, I am the messenger of God. I am the messenger of Allah. So as rational human beings, and we're all thinking human beings, we're all intelligent in our own unique way. We all adopt a sense of common sense. We will never cross the, cross the road blindfolded. We'll cross the road using our senses. So let's use our minds and approach the claim of Muhammad upon him be peace in this way. So he said, I am the messenger of God. Let's test this out. We know there are four options. He was either lying, he was deluded or crazy, he was both lying or deluded, or he was speaking the truth. These are the logical options and let's work together as thinking human beings to see who Muhammad was. Was he a liar or was he speaking the truth? The first option, he was a liar. I'm going to argue to claim Muhammad upon him be peace, a liar, is equivalent of claiming that no one on earth has ever spoken the truth. No one. Because the psychological profile of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is does not fit the profile of a liar. Why? Because he was tortured. He was boycotted. He was so hungry, he tied two rocks, two stones to his stomach. He saw his beloved companions being murdered and tortured. He was boycotted from his beloved city. He was harmed so much that people used to step on his neck and almost break his neck. He was stoned by the people he loved, children. And he loved children so much. He was a mercy to children, but he was stoned by children for hours because he went to a town in Arabia just to call them to what? The belief in the one true God, in the belief in La ilaha illallah. There is no deity worthy of worship except the deity, Al ilah Allah, which means the deity. This was his message, but he was starving. There was no smoke coming from the house of his wife for six months. So we see the calamity, the chaos, all, all for a simple profound message. 
Also, he was offered riches and power and money and women and glory and status. But he rejected all of that just for a simple, profound message that is so intuitive to all of us. La ilaha illallah, which means there is no object worthy of worship but the deity himself. That was the reality. But also even more profound, we know the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, he was a statesman. And there were battles and these battles were to defend the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Because under the Medinan state, we had to protect everybody within that state, even the non-Muslims. This is why the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace said, whoever harms a non-Muslim under our protection harms the Prophet himself. So when he was fighting in the battle of Hunayn, the thousands of arrows were coming and his companions had to inevitably almost retreat. He still marched forward and he said, I am the messenger of Allah and I am not a liar. Look at the bravery. Does this befit the profile of a liar? Does this fit the profile of Allah? No, it doesn't. And this is why, if this is true, then we could never claim he's a liar. To, to claim Muhammad a liar, upon whom be peace, is to claim no one has ever spoken the truth. Because no one has done all of this just for a simple profound message. To reject Muhammad upon whom be peace is rejecting your own mother. Because the only reason you know your mother is your mother is because she told you, your dad told you, and your family told you. Testimony. But we have the testimony of history that's far more profound and has far more implications that says this man could never have been a liar. Let's go to the second option. He was deluded or crazy. Well, how can we say this man is deluded or crazy? Let's first go to his teachings. Are his teachings the product of a deluded man? He said, upon whom be peace, there is no harming and no reciprocating of harm. He said, you will not truly believe unless you love for others what you love for yourself. He said, if you put kindness or compassion in something, it elevates it. If you remove compassion and kindness, it degrades it. He also said that we must be just. He said, which is the Arabic and the English is, be conscious of oppression. Be conscious of injustice, for it's going to be darkness on the day of judgment. The Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, he gave us an amazing economic theory that has transcended communism, socialism, liberalism, neoliberalism, libertarianism, utilitarianism, all the isms and schisms and the mirages that we chase in the political desert. He transcended all of this because he said to us that the son of Adam, you, the human beings, all they need is food, shelter and clothing. He defined their essential limited needs and therefore created an economic theory of distribution. But capitalism has failed us, the disease of capitalism, because it says there's too many needs, not enough resources. But the food agricultural organization has said, there is enough calories on this planet to feed three planets. So 1400 years ago, his geopolitical theory transcends time. So how can we say this man was mad or deluded? Also, a deluded person who wants to believe what they're doing is truth would use any circumstance in their favor. But the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace never did this. There was an eclipse at the time of the death of his son. And his companions thought this eclipse was because of the death of his son. He said, no, Allah, God doesn't make nothing eclipse for anyone's death, even the death of a son of a prophet. If he was deluded, if he was deluded, he would have said, oh yeah, this has really happened because I am really a prophet. So we see it is impossible that he is deluded. What about the third option? He's both lying and deluded. This again is a logical contradiction. Can we have a square triangle? 
Impossible. A square has four sides, a triangle has three. A square triangle, three becomes four, four becomes three. It's impossible. It's like justifying the Trinity. It's impossible. So, how can someone lie, which means they know they're not speaking the truth and maintaining a falsehood, but someone who's deluded is someone who thinks they're speaking the truth, but yet it's based on falsehood. These two, things are, these two things are a contradiction. So my friends, my dear fellow human beings, my brothers and sisters in humanity, rationally we know he must have been speaking the truth because we've discussed that he could never be a liar. We discussed that he couldn't be deluded. We discussed that he couldn't be a liar and deluded. Therefore, he was speaking the truth. And if he was speaking the truth, brothers and sisters and friends, if he was speaking the truth, it means indeed he was a messenger of God. It is no wonder the Arabs at the time, his own enemies, called him the trustworthy. So this is who Muhammad was upon whom be peace. A man that changed reality. A man that you may not believe in, but he's affected all your lives in a profound way. Someone give me the name. Trevor, Kevin, Kevin, do you know Muhammad changed your life in a way that you don't even know? Have you used a computer before? Have you been to court? Yes. Have you gone to science class at school? In all these ways, in all these ways, Muhammad changed your life. Do you believe in tolerance? He's changed your life. And let me explain why. Who's got an iPhone? Who has an iPhone or Blackberry or a computer at home? Do you have a computer at home? Yes. The very reason you could go on Twitter, you could go on Facebook, you could use an iPhone, you could use your iPad is because of Muhammad. You may think I'm crazy. I am crazy, but not today. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The reason we have the computer and the iPhone is because of Muhammad upon whom be peace. Let me tell you why. Because of his teachings of tranquility, tolerance, justice, economic distribution, bringing people together. Because of these teachings, we developed an amazing Islamic environment in Islamic Spain. Who's heard of Islamic Spain before? Many of us. There was a convivencia, which literally means a coexistence. And this coexistence facilitated the progress that we needed to develop theories and to develop notions and assertions like the algorithm. Algorithm. Without the algorithm, you will never have a computer, an iPhone or an iPad. And this came, this came from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he gave us the teachings to facilitate that progress. Who's got a 20 pound note? Who's got a 20 pound note? Who's got a 20 pound note? Well, if you look behind your 20 pound note, there is a man called Adam Smith. Adam Smith wrote, and he was the 18th century founder of capitalism. And Adam Smith wrote that if it wasn't for the empire of the caliphs, the empire of the caliphs, the Muslims, we wouldn't have the tranquil environment to look into the interconnecting principles of nature. And this is why Professor Thomas Arnold, a historian, an Arabist, what did he say? He said, brothers and sisters and friends, he said that if it wasn't for Islamic Spain and Islam, we would not have the Renaissance and we wouldn't have the scientific revolution. So, Calvin, he's affected your life from that perspective. You've been to court. The very reason you, Kevin, could walk into court and say that I'm innocent, the presumption of innocence came from the Muslims. And we don't even know this. We don't even know this. If we read the academic works of Marcel Boissard in his 1980s article on the probable influence on, of Islam and the presumption of innocence, he writes that King Louis IX, King Louis IX traveled to the East and met a monk. And this is according to the chroniclers. And he spoke to this monk 
And this monk taught King Louis IX a prophetic tradition of Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace about justice and the presumption of innocence. And King Louis IX went back to Europe and he was accused. He was the source of the European idea of the presumption of innocence. So you went into court, you were assumed innocent. That was from Muhammad upon whom be peace. Also tolerance. What about tolerance? We see different colors here, different nations and races and religion. Britain is based upon tolerance. We see America is based upon a form of tolerance. <laughs> Who? Who influenced them? John Locke. John Locke was a post alignment thinker. And he influenced the founding fathers of America and Western politics, especially on civil governance. And John Locke writes personally and said, I am influenced by one man. And this man was called Edward Pocock. Edward Pocock traveled to the East and took manuscripts. He was the first Orientalist and a scholar of Islam in Oxford University. And John Locke used to sit in front of Edward Pocock and learn about what happened in Islam concerning tolerance and justice. And John Locke wrote the treatise on tolerance. And John Locke, he wrote on civil governance. And in civil governance, he discusses government in the following way. As a vicegerency, everybody translates, translate vicegerency in Arabic. Khilafa, Khilafa, the political institution of Islam. John Locke, influenced by Muhammad upon whom be peace. So this man that you don't even know, he influenced scientific revolution. He influenced the presumption of innocence and he influenced tolerance in the West. So now you know who this man is. Investigate him. Don't shoot the messenger. Test the message. Testthemessage.com And I like, I like to say something to everybody. What I'd like to say everyone is now what you've heard, have an open heart and an open mind. And if you don't know, then ask. As the Prophet Muhammad upon whom BP said, the cure to ignorance is to ask and learn. So in this light, let us proceed. Takbir! Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa May Allah guide you and bless you and shower you with his mercy and his love from me. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>